Welcome, wool enthusiasts. Today we're diving into the woolly world of shearing sheep. So grab your knitting needles, sit back, and let's begin. Today I'm working with my Pagora Cross, getting a quick brush out of Rocky, speeding up the process of shedding that undercoat, as well as giving our dairy sheep and Shetland sheep a much needed haircut. The Shetland sheep, as a primitive and heritage breed, have been shedding their wool like crazy. And I'm interested in processing the wool rather than picking it off of trees. Shetland wool is renowned for its softness, warmth, and fineness. But to obtain this incredible fiber, first we must rue or shear our sheep annually. For those new to Shetland sheep or other primitive breeds, rueing is the process where we comb or pluck, as they say, the wool. The wool has a weak point that develops every spring that allows the sheep to shed their wool through rubbing onto trees, branches, fence lines too if needed. Wool gets everywhere. These guys are just beginning to shed. This is my first time rearing a Shetland sheep breed. I've spoken to other Shetland sheep breeders about this historical process. More on that another time. Fish seems to be the most ready to brew. But it's not coming out as evenly as I'd like. I think fish can tell too. Unfortunately, many of them weren't really ready to fully rue. And there's an upcoming heat wave. Luckily, in the climatic chaos of the Anthropocene era, we have haircuts. Enough about heat stress, let's move on to the tool at hand. For rearing primitives or helping fiber sheep shed their winter coat, I found this metal comb really helpful. It glides through the rough coat and gently coaxes out that undercoat. Next up, shearing tools. Traditionally, I've used hand clippers. They're very affordable, easy to sharpen. The downside is that they're time consuming to use and it does take some skill to use properly. Just like with people, sheep need regular hair care, or in the sheep's case, wool care. It may sound redundant, but it's not uncommon for an animal's coat maintenance to be neglected, and for shepherds or animal caretakers to get overwhelmed with the responsibility of a specific coat qualities, regardless of species. My girls are in various stages of pregnancies at the moment, so I want to be extra mindful of how they might get hot or impatient with hanging out while I give them their wool cut. I know my technique is uncommon. I shear them standing up as I like to give them treats. And I tend to take a while to shear. If you're using a sheep shearer, they may advise you to withhold food and water the night before, say like in a doctor or vet appointment. My flock are on their feet ruminating, but if they had a full tummy, it would make a haircut all the more uncomfortable and that's no bueno. The main thing I like is a relationship of trust and a clean area to work. Sheep are prey animals and they really respond to a calm and positive interaction. Moving slowly and purposefully creates a soothing environment for shearing sheep. And sure, in hand clipping or hand shearing, a standard or large sheep breed, these shears are a breeze. But with micro sheep, I'm finding it a tougher to get as tight of a cut as I'd like. Given fish's shorter lock length, I really want to maximize my cuts. I'm not gaining the maneuverability with these shears. I really need to order some smaller hand shears. What I do like about hand shearing is how quiet it is. The spring action of the clippers really help hand fatigue, and they are very lightweight. Some people often ask, why do we have to shear sheep, period? And that's a good question. It all goes back 9,000 years ago, and the short story is that sheep provide a warm, renewable, sustainable resource that can convert inedible plants to clothing, insulation, bedding, and more. Over those 9,000 years, the breeds were selected with a specific purpose in mind, none of which could even predict the innovation of mushroom-based leather or non-renewable-based fibers. Nevertheless, yesterday's innovation and adaptation is today's heat stress. Shearing helps sheep cope with the sudden changes of seasons and helps them live happier and longer. There are other problems that can arise from a lack of wool care, just like in people who may also experience similar problems, such as lice, mites, skin infections, and mats. Lamy here is a modern breed. She's an East Frisian cross dairy sheep and sporting a beautiful thick coat of wool. She can't shed her wool, so let's get going and give her a bit of a trim. She was sheared last year, so we won't have any weak points in the wool that would cause problems in spinning or life of the yarn later on. My hand shears are a bit my hand shears are a bit large for smaller breeds. It feels a bit unmanageable, mainly with fish with her smaller frame as well as shorter wool length. It does make things more challenging, but the breeder was very upfront about these qualities and the wool length isn't a problem for me to spin. Switching to the hand shears 
They are larger than their head. There's a large face in the bay, which is nice, but working with such a small frame sheet, I'm finding I'm not able to get the detail I'm looking for. As an experiment, I decided to bring out some dog clippers. Amazingly, the dog clippers actually cut pretty well. I'm trying to focus on the point of the wool break, both for the clippers to work through easier and to maximize the best wool. The lanolin or natural oils in the wool are really clogging up the clippers, but nothing a dental pick or artist pick can't clean up. Fudge is pretty straightforward. There's very little veggie matter to get in the way of the clippers. He's a good size so I can hug the clippers to his body with ease. Plus, he's super patient. The main thing I'm working against is time. Balancing family responsibilities, work, and livestock is quite the feat of time management, but doable. Next up, we have Lily, a beautiful dark brown Shetland with a crewnet marking. You can really see how the sun leaching affected her fleece. I'm diving right into the fleece and trying to make some headway in opening it up and starting to get this coat off in one go. I like to use both hands in shearing, whether with my hand clippers or hand shears. What I'm aiming to do is guide the coat away from the choking the blade, but mainly keep the skin tight, smooth, without pulling up from the weight of the wool as it falls away. Some breeds can be pretty wrinkly, as well as the weight of wrinkles or folds. It could be a problem in some cases. Next up is Rami, our black cut and get Shetland chief ram. He's a pretty mellow fellow, but he's showing some trepidation. Kiwi, one of his girlfriends, came over to offer emotional support and break him out. He's still a bit jumpy, and after some troubleshooting, it looks like it's due to the sound. I'm having trouble trimming the wool close to his eyes and horns. Luckily, these dog shears fit really well. I'm able to continue on. Rami is still expressing his displeasure, but I'm sure he'll love it when I can finally get my hands on him with a good back rub. Although it may look like it's over, the process of wool to clothing has just begun. A year's worth of fresh food, clean water, health, happiness, has gone into growing the best wool possible. One of the things I love about Shetland sheep is the diversity in the breed as well as the individual sheep. Each fleece is unique with different qualities and grades, even in the same sheep from head to hock. After sorting, grading, and skirting, the wool is ready to be reborn in its next life. Will it go to the garden, a shawl, or perhaps socks? Don't forget, without this careful annual shearing, you wouldn't have the honor to work with this incredible fiber. If you enjoyed this video and want to join us for more wooly adventures, make sure to like and leave a yarn emoji if you made it to the end. Thank you and I appreciate you. You heard it here first. You are one in a million.